Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. There has been some pretty unseasonable weather across the UK recently. In fact, when I looked out of my window the first thing this morning, I wondered briefly whether I'd been fast forwarded into October. The reason, an area of low pressure tracking north eastwards and by 12 GMT on Tuesday the 6th of July, centered just to the east of Scotland, with the whole of the UK under a cool and showery west or northwesterly flow. Through the coming days, the risk of showers remains, but they probably become more scattered, at least for a time. Into the weekend and areas of low pressure in the Atlantic begin to encroach upon the UK once more, so showers start to become heavier and more widespread again. I wouldn't be a it's all surprised with some very heavy and thundery downpours in places. Into the early part of next week, and that changeable or even quite unsettled theme continues. I'll show some air mass and two meter forecast temperature charts from the same GFS model. This is the air mass profile, so about 1500 meters above our heads. Forecast for 15 GMT on Thursday, the 8th of July. The light greens and yellowy oranges over the UK are suggesting pretty close to the 30-year average. So what that means down at the two meter level is temperatures around 22, 23 Celsius, maybe a little bit cooler as you head northwards and westwards. Often though, it's possible to add one or two degrees onto these GFS values because it can be quite conservative when forecasting maximums. Therefore, I'd not be entirely surprised if locally in the south 24 or 25 Celsius was reached pleasantly warm. Fast forward into Monday the 12th of July. The light greens, yellows across the UK have become darker greens. That's indicating somewhat cooler air mass, so we're now probably a little bit below the 30 year norm. And the temperatures down at the two meter level, the ones we experience, have responded. Maximum values of around 20 Celsius, so say add one or two on, we get up to 22 Celsius in the London area, and there isn't really much variance as we head northwards. So all of those charts suggest that temperatures will be fluctuating through the first week across the UK, but there isn't anything out of the ordinary, which is more than what can be said for southern Spain, if the forecast is correct. This is 15 GMT on Sunday the 11th of July, and if I move out of the way, look at that, 45 Celsius being forecast in the southern half of Spain. That is seriously hot if you haven't experienced it. I have several times and I can show you that, that is proper, proper heat. If we look at the uh, air mass profile graph, which I've pasted in here for, the, for, for a location in southern Spain, you can see values there are peaking at about 15 Celsius above the 30 year norm. That's a huge anomaly. I think what we're seeing happen is areas of low pressure tracking across northwestern Europe where it's quite cool. And in turn, what they're doing is trapping in the heat into southern uh, Spain where it's just building and building and building. Another way of looking at the temperature profile across Europe is the uh, aggregate snapshot, uh, which is showing anomalies relative to the 30 year average, naught to 10 days. Across France, there, the low countries, Germany, the United Kingdom, white or blue shading indicating close to or below the 30 year average. But so if we look down at southern Spain, you can see the red shading and the anomaly there, five, six, seven Celsius. That's over the entire 10 day period. Remember that within it will be some time slots where the anomaly is much, much greater than five, six, seven Celsius. So it, as I say, there is some serious heat if this forecast turns out to be correct. Also just briefly worth noting, there's some dark red over Scandinavia, much of Eastern Europe as well, indicating relatively warm conditions. So it is, just at the moment in our part of the world, the northwest of Europe, where it's looking to be on the cool side. So warm everywhere else in, in, in the European continent. Rainfall, the showery nature means there will be quite a lot of variance locally within short distances. You find some places where 
there's virtually nothing and go down the road and they'll have had a deluge. So I'm only using this snapshot from the GFS model to illustrate what it's, it's indicating at the moment. The snapshots for the 0 to 10 day time period. We can see the wettest conditions are tending to be in eastern parts of Britain and up into the north there. Drier generally, not exclusively, but generally in the west. And I think that may well be indicative of the Azores high pressure building at times from the southwest and having more influence on western parts of the United Kingdom, keeping them drier on some days with the heaviest showers being focused on eastern and northern areas. So how do the deterministic models stack up against each other one week ahead? Just to recap, here's the GFS on Tuesday the 13th of July. Showery picture across the UK, low pressure close by, the resource high pressure remaining too far southwest to be a major player. The German icon model, very similar. We've got the resource high pressure stuck down to the southwest, low pressure close to the UK, showers, maybe even long spells of rain with this type of pattern. The Canadian model, same old story, low pressure remains close by. UK Met Office, not a very summary picture at all today. You see here, low pressure, centred over some half of Britain. So once more, showers, maybe even longer spells of rain. Finally, the European ECM model. Well, it's yet more of the same. Therefore, I think what this is telling me is there's a good degree of consistency among the deterministic models at seven days ahead. Obviously, the details are varying, but the general pattern is very similar. It suggests a high degree of forecast confidence in that changeable theme continuing. So an ongoing risk of showers, long spells of rain. There will be some drier and warmer days mixed in, but very mediocre for, uh, at the first week, I think would probably summarize it in much of the country. So on to the ensemble data to look at the second week of the forecast period in particular. Start with the 16-day London GEFS plot today. The MS profile goes across the top. The thick black line shows a 30-year average. And during the first, well, about seven, eight, nine days, there isn't a great deal of deviation from that thick black line. So mostly close to the average. It's when we head towards the middle of the month that the runs are increasingly warming up. More and more are going for a warmer solution at the upper air level, so about 1,500 meters above our heads, as I say. That doesn't automatically translate to warmer conditions down at the surface because cloud cover, rainfall, they, they, they are important inputs as well. It just suggests the potential for it to warm up. So on rainfall, here we go, we can see there's an ongoing risk. It doesn't look particularly wet at any point. The number of spikes, those are runs in the ensemble which are going for rain at a given time slot. It's never great, but it never completely goes away. So even when that warm up occurs, if it does, during the middle part of July, there is still that possibility of there being some showers or long spells of rain in the southeast. So it's, it's not looking particularly wet by any means. Up to uh, Belfast to see what's happening in the northwest. Well, on the air mass profile, I've annotated this has been mostly close to or slightly above the average. The, the above average runs again are tending to manifest themselves later on in the period, but there is, there is quite a big spread there. There are some cooler uh, solutions being offered as well. I think it's probably suggesting a varying amount of Atlantic influence in this part of, uh, in, in this part of the UK. In terms of rainfall, which probably backs up what I'm saying here, we're seeing more spikes appearing in the longer term. Again, it's not particularly wet by any means, but there are more rain spikes here than there were on the London chart. I'm going to throw in a caveat here and try to keep it as simple as possible by saying I'm not 100% convinced by the scenario that these ensemble plots are showing. The reason for that is that several times this summer this type of thing has been predicted by the computer models 
only for the outcome to be that low pressure remains more influential in the south, the southeast, and high pressure builds across the north and northwest. Whether, whether or not that's going to happen again and uh, throw these, throw these uh, ensemble plots out of the window or not, I wouldn't like to say, but it's certainly not something which I will discount at the moment. Looking at the temperature anomaly profile from the ensemble data, we can see in the southeast there's some yellow shading, which is a positive anomaly. So this is days 10 to 15 of the forecast period. In the northwest, so across Scotland in particular and Northern Ireland, Northwest England too, there's some blue or white shading, which is going for slightly below average temperatures. Again, this is all fitting in with a more typical British summer pattern with high pressure having uh, a greater influence in the south, the southeast, and the Atlantic flow still brushing into the northwest. But as I just mentioned, not entirely sold on that particular solution at the moment. It's probably the most likely one, but I would say there's still a significant possibility of it not happening. Looking at the rainfall data tables, London first. Each column summarizes the ensemble output for one time slot. Light gray shows completely dry runs, dark gray mainly dry, with the purples, blues, greens, and yellows going for more significant rainfall. What we see is there's an increase in amount of light gray and dark gray. Moving forwards, the blues, purples, and greens never entirely disappear. So generally a sort of drying picture moving forwards, but still the risk of some rain at times. Looking at the comparable one for Belfast, you can see straight away there are more purples, blues, greens, a bit of yellow there, are all uh, bigger in the columns. There's more of them, there's less grey, there is still some light grey, those are completely dry runs, but most are going for at least a little rain. So again, as I say, it fits in with that pattern which the ensembles are going for with wetter and cooler conditions in the northwest. Surface level pressure data table, Nottingham I'm using today as a reasonably central location. It's a little bit, mm, because what we see is in the short term, the columns go completely yellow. That's 1,011 to 1,025 millibars. Then low pressure into the early part of the next week has more influence. That's what the uh, GFS sequence was showing that I ran at the start. Moving forwards, the green decreases again. There's also some orange appearing. Those are runs going for 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. So those are really firmly set on high pressure. But most remain in the yellow bucket, which is many of those will be slightly above average pressure, but there, are, there will be a few which are below it because of the, the range which it encompasses. So all in all, what we're seeing there is a trend towards higher pressure uh, developing later on in this 16-day uh, period. And probably if the GFS, GEFS is correct, we're seeing pressure becoming a little bit above the 30-year average. In turn, that also suggests the likelihood of drier conditions. I thought I'd finally take a look at the European um, mean, on, uh, mean ensemble surface pressure forecast. Starting off with Tuesday the 13th of July, you can see the UK here. The 1015 millibar line is cutting through uh, Ireland down into southwestern England. So at this point, the ensemble mean is a little bit a little bit below the average for the time of the year. Pressure's below the average if it's correct. But if we move forward to Friday the 16th of July, by then the 1020 millibar line has moved up and, and that's now cutting through parts of Ireland and down through central Britain. So it's it's showing high pressure becoming more influential at the 10 days ahead uh, time step. And again, this, as I say, this is the European ECM ensemble data, but it does fit together quite nicely with what the GEFS is going for. So an improving picture of this ensemble data is correct. 
both European ECM and the North American GEFS are suggesting it. Better, if you like, drier and warmer conditions developing in uh, southern and central parts of Britain, potentially more changeable and cooler in the northwest. So to summarize, week one, it's generally mixed. There's an ongoing risk of showers. They become more scattered for a time, but then they reinvigorate as areas of low pressure push in from the Atlantic. Some could be heavy and thundery. Temperatures will be dependent to a large extent on the amount of cloud and showers, but in sunny spells, there is the potential for it to be a little bit warmer than the average on Sundays. Week two, confidence is low, but what the ensemble suggest is it will turn drier. Despite that, there is still a risk of showers or longer spells of rain, particularly in the northwest of the UK. Therefore, the most settled and warmest conditions are being forecast for the south and the southeast. Having said that, the influence of high pressure remains quite uncertain and small changes could result in drier or wetter scenarios and also the distribution of rainfall across the UK. So there we have it. It's, I think, quite a mixed picture. There's that potential, according to the ensemble data, for an improvement, especially in southern and southeastern areas during week two. I'm not entirely uh, sold on the solution at this stage, so it's very much a case of watching how things develop in the coming days. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.